Hey guys, we just finished a commercial series for Sell with Cease. Mom made spaghetti for the 14th time this month. It's a superfood, she says. It's not. This project had a limited budget and a quick turnaround time. We decided to shoot two commercials with shots that were mirrors of each other. One was about a young couple needing to move out of their parents' house, and the other one was about the parents downsizing. Now, these were comedic spots that only used visual effects to supplement production limitations. So I wanted to pull back the curtain and show how we did some of these visual effects shots. Today, we're gonna look at using content-aware fill in both Photoshop and After Effects to remove the logo from a foam finger. Let's get started. Okay, so we want to remove the Ohio State logo from this foam finger. I started with Mocha Pro thinking that I would do a mesh track. If you're not familiar with it, the mesh tracker is a super powerful tracker of uneven surfaces. While the foam finger is a fairly flat surface, the mesh tracker should do a great job of picking up all of the points of contrast, as well as have the capability to stick with parts of it as it changes perspective. So my plan going into this was do a mesh track and then paint out the logo of a single frame of the foam finger and then add that back in with Mocha Pro in After Effects. So here's the problem that I ran into. The lighting and shadows changed a lot on the foam finger, and truthfully, it gave me a not really usable result. I always say a big part of my job is just to be a problem solver, and sometimes that means throwing different techniques at the same shot and seeing what works. So I tried a new plan, which was using Content Aware Fill, and it worked really well. As I was working on the shot, someone asked me why I didn't simply use the Mocha Track data and apply a gradient to it, maybe keyframing it along the way. And the truth is, that's not where my mind went. And I think part of the reason is because I know that the gradient wouldn't be totally linear, having more to do with the angles of the shadows and of course the hand being inside of it. And I wanted to make sure that we didn't lose the foam texture. But of course, it's a way I could have tried to solve this shot. Here we're in a new comp and I have the Ohio State logo masked out. Now I actually used the track from Mocha Pro to mat this out, but you could do this pretty easily yourself by drawing a mask around the shape and tracking it or keyframing it as it moves a bit. Let's go to the content aware fill panel and we'll leave this on surface with lighting correction set to moderate and we'll generate a fill layer. So you can see that this actually gave us a pretty interesting result. Using Adobe's AI, which is called Adobe Sensei, it figured out that we wanted to fill this area with more foam finger, but it kind of guessed and generated its own pattern of white. And we want this whole area to be red. So we need to assist After Effects by giving it a reference frame, or possibly multiple reference frames. I'll go to this frame where it's pretty flat, and I'll create a reference layer. This will open Photoshop. So now I'm going to use Content Aware Fill in Photoshop. I'll select the area that we want to fill, and I'll go to Edit, Content Aware Fill, and now we can control what goes into it. This is really cool because we can paint the exact areas that we want it to reference. And you can see the more areas that we paint, the better the final result starts to look. This alone is a really cool technique to know in Photoshop because there isn't enough for us to, let's say, use the Clone Stamp tool to remove the logo. Once you're done painting the area and you're satisfied with the result, you can hit OK, and then you may want to do some final cleanup to blend the layers together. Save the Photoshop file, and then back in After Effects, you can generate a fill layer again, and it should work much better. If you're still not getting the result you want, you can repeat this process for a different frame, let's say one where the lighting has changed a little bit. I personally created two reference frames for this shot. And finally, you may want to look at things like adding motion blur and grain to your newly created layer. Here was my final result. Dad missed a touchdown because Megan was watching House Hunters last week. The remote hasn't left his hand since. At least Megan. I found this technique to be really useful for another visual effects shot that I worked on recently. You can see we have this piece of putty on the bottom of a bowl that we need to remove. Clone stamping really won't work well on this shot, but I was able to use content aware fill in After Effects to fix some of those frames. But there were a few frames that got really muddy. In Photoshop, I was able to dial in what section should be pulling from the bowl and what section should be pulling from the table, and I was able to get really nice results. Here's the final comparison. When Adobe released Content Aware Fill back in 2019, I thought, well, that's great for replacing something like grass or a walkway, but recently I've really started using it in my visual effects workflow. 
These are shots you almost have to paint frame by frame, and it's really hard to clone them from other parts of the shot. So I'm really excited to see where these AI tools go in the next few years. If you're not aware, we have tons of other content to fill your head with knowledge. So please subscribe to our channel. I have a series of free After Effects tools to speed up your workflow and other tutorials. And we have a ton of other great video production content on this channel. Speaking of bad dad jokes, in my next video, we'll take a look at replacing the cover of this book with mesh tracking in Mocha Pro. See you on the next one.